Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cassette Tapes channel, and uh, of course I am your host Mickey T, as always with me is my co-host Nostalgia. Hello. And welcome to the aforementioned brand new series that we've been doing, that we've been planning to do for a good while now. We've basically decided, why not just try branch off a little bit from the podcast format and do something just a little bit more casual, like like generally about one particular album. And um, Nostalgia, do you want to mention what that album is? Uh, the Weeknd's new project, Dawn FM. Ooh, The Weeknd, Dawn <laughs> FM. <laughs> Big one. It's a big one. I'm actually really surprised that we got a really big project like this already. Yeah. Like, first week of the year, especially. Yeah. Like, damn, this just came out of nowhere, really. It's kind of in character for the weekend. He's a little off kilter these days. And I, it's exciting. I like it. Yeah, yeah, I can get that. And especially as someone who is like a fan of After Hours, I think it's really cool that we're already getting a follow up to that album, which is now like supposedly in a trilogy. I think there's mm, supposed to be, yeah. like, a third one coming out in this whole, like, 80s, like, exploration. And uh, I'm excited for the third album, all in all. And I uh, no, I guess just, what are your general thoughts on The weekend's discography thus far? Thus far, I've pretty much consistently enjoyed almost every project he's put out. Um, S- Starboy was a little hit or miss, but when it hit, it was fantastic. But, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a super fan, but I've been somewhat lukewarm to warm on his discography um you know a, a few blunders but those are usually tracks rather than projects um his first few mixtapes are ones i haven't listened to admittedly in maybe like two or three years but you know i definitely like the vibe of those um yeah i like the weekend <laughs> you could say i like the weekend too it's <laughs> it's not like a, a weekend worst to best is like one of my biggest videos on my own individual channel that thing is like <laughs> I don't know, oh, yeah. like 4K views now? I don't know. You're a connoisseur. I am a connoisseur. I am a weekend connoisseur. Uh, I claim to be one, at least. And uh, generally, I'm a fan. I like The weekend. I think that the trilogy of mixtapes he came out with back in, like, 2011 are classics. They're amazing. Very, um, what's the word? Groundbreaking and very, like, influential mm-hmm. for all R&B, which is a given. Like, they're very fucking interesting. Then, like, after that, I feel like The weekend has more or less just been trying to shoot for, like, mainstream numbers and stuff like that, you know? Like, mm. with albums like Starboy, Beauty Behind the Madness, and even After Hours, which, you know, was a success for him. You know, obviously, that spawned some of his biggest hits, like yeah. uh, like <laughs> Blinding Lights. Who hasn't heard that song at least ten times mm. uh, in the span of one day? Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that, that album, especially After Hours, was one of my favorites. I really love that album. Uh, I loved it when it came out. I still love it now. And, uh, of course, I was very excited to check out Dawn FM. I was really interested to see what The weekend would do next. And um, I suppose just, we'll just get into the album in general. So, uh, let's, let's, do you want to start off? Just give your general thoughts? Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I as a follow-up to um, After Hours, it's <clears throat> like stylistically, aesthetically quite safe as in it it plays a lot of the same cards that after hours does um which i mean i'm not against the kind of synth wavy style that he's doing is kind of unique to him there's a lot of people uh you know doing their own spin on 80s stuff but uh i think his has a very as i said synth wave kind of almost inspired aesthetic to it which um at least in the mainstream you don't really see that much of um but just like After Hours, I, th- I think this album is good. It's got some incredible moments, but I think it's still got a fair few flaws. Um, and I can get to those n- now, or do you want to just yeah, I'll, give I'll your just, opinion first? Yeah, I'll give my opinion. So yeah. I'm pretty disappointed by Don FM, if I'm being honest here. Like, uh, not that it's a bad album. It's far from it. It definitely has its really good tracks, but as a whole... It's it's like you said it's it's a it's a very safe um, album for for me at least like I don't know it just kind of seems like to me at least the weekend saw like the success of um, of blinding lights and it's like you know what people really love this like very eighties and synthwave sound so you know what let's just give them more of that but with something that has a bit more of a pop edge to mm-hmm. it and you know it's respectable and out of anyone I thought the weekend would be able to do that very well but I don't know it just I guess the only tracks that were really hitting for me were like, I'd say the first five or so. And then Mm. after that, it just kind of stagnates into like this really safe bit of like 
uh, 80s like sounding pastiche in a way you know with mm. tracks that just aren't really that memorable or interesting and honestly this is probably going to come off as a really hot take for a lot of fans of the weekend but honestly i think don fm is his worst album and i'm oh. being dead serious about that <laughs> to be okay. honest like i'm sorry <laughs> like i honestly really don't I, I like it has good tracks but as a whole it's just there's just a lot of factors that really contribute to why i'm just not really a fan of it obviously the biggest one being that it just feels kind of safe and unmemorable in the grander scheme mm-hmm. of the weekend's discography you know yeah, I can agree with you on safe. Uh, another another flaw for me is um, even within of itself, there's a bit of a lack of variety. Um, you know, when it plays its cards cards right, it's it's really good. But I think there's plenty of tracks on here that just kind of are forgettable, that are just a little too safe, a little too by the numbers, um, and you know, drag the album down. Um, I also don't think songwriting is always consistent. Um, the track Best Friends in particular is um, just <laughs> rough. It it doesn't sound uh, like the instrumentation mixed with the, the lyricism. That It just doesn't sound like a good combination. It feels awkward. It feels out of place. Um, but generally, I think, despite its flaws, I think the highlights make up for it. And the concept is... I mean, while obviously not unique, um, it's it still, I think, is executed well, especially when it comes to the aesthetic. It, it definitely feels like what he's going for, a kind of futuristic, retro-futuristic uh, radio station. Um, but again, not exactly original, and I, I don't think, aside from the aesthetic, I don't think it's too fleshed out, but it's I, th- I enjoyed the concept. I thought it was a fun idea, and you know aesthetically it was executed pretty well yeah aesthetically like that concept was definitely like it seemed cohesive like mm. it definitely seemed that way and i think like getting jim carrey to do anything on your album is a fat w in my books so there's always that but like i i guess i do agree with you on some of the songwriting like it is very hit or miss and it does feel kind of awkward at points but i also noticed that like I think I was watching um, Tabby's reaction to Dawn FM mm. when that came out. And uh, I think he mentioned, like, it was kind of a, somewhat of a continuation of, like, the storyline that was on After Hours, which uh, I can kind of see, but it just feels very fractured, in my opinion. It doesn't seem, like, all that cohesive. Or maybe I'm just too smooth brain to pick up on every single detail that's in the lyrics. But, like, you know, I guess the songwriting was very hit or miss for me. And mm. uh, I guess... As a whole, the concept, I think it's cool. Not original, like you said, but it's cool. It gives the album a bit of personality. And um, I guess that interlude with uh, Quincy Jones was actually a really good idea. I Mm. I really like that idea. It adds a bit of... It does that... In a way, it kind of adds to the flow of the album for me. Because, you know, at the beginning, it's like... You know, it's very fun. It's very upbeat. It's just very much like this very fun synthwave kind of thing. Then afterwards, it gets a bit... It does get a bit slower and a tad bit darker, you know? And, Mm. um... I think that does add to the flow of the album, and also just the way it flows seamlessly. That's a very that's a very nice touch, I will admit. And you know, generally speaking, just it feels like a cohesive album. But like the problem for me is that it just kind of feels watered down. You know, it doesn't feel as interesting or as expansive as I thought After Hours was. And in a way, it's just like I don't know. It just feels like I said watered down. You know, like it's not really touching upon anything that's really that overly interesting but like mm. I, like there's definitely great tracks that do work especially like uh moments like uh take my breath and sacrifice and uh mm. how how do i make you love me they're all really great tracks in my opinion yeah i mean i don't necessarily disagree with a lot of what you said um i just think that the highlights are a lot of the time so strong that they sort of save the album for me um, but yeah, I mean, I I can see where you're coming from, and in a lot of ways, I agree. Yeah, I think just after that whole after that Quincy Jones like interlude or whatever, it kind of dips from there for me. Mm. After that, it just becomes like really boring and unmemorable. <laughs> and uh, even the Tyler the Creator feature uh, underwhelmed mm-hmm. me a lot, to be honest. Yeah. A little also, out of place, to be honest. Yeah, it does, and also it just kind of feels like Tyler was phoning it in. Do you think? Mm, I, I mean, I don't think it was his strongest performance, but I wouldn't say phoning it in. Mm, okay. I, I think um, 
it was more so a case of him just kind of being thrown there. I don't think, I don't know, I don't see this aesthetic, Tyler in this aesthetic, you know, the 80s synthwave. Maybe, I mean, I can definitely see it happening if it was Tyler's vision, but he was just kind of thrown in there. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Mm. <laughs> I think the funniest part of the album, though, was the Lil Wayne feature. He just sounded oh, yeah. so fucking out of place. Another, another very out of place, even more so than Tyler, for sure. Like, this um, really upbeat, like, synth-pop track, and then out of nowhere, just mm-hmm. on comes Lil Wayne, like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that, every... was def- that was another like, moment that was just kind of th- thrown together. Yeah, like, no, nah, you don't understand. When I went for a walk earlier on and I re-listened to this album, like, the first time I heard it, I, I just burst out laughing, because I thought it was the funniest shit imaginable. And then, like, I was... I went for a walk, I was struggling to hold in a laugh that everyone was looking at me like, oh, what the fuck is up with you? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, I felt so weird in public, but this is what, like, Out of Place Lil Wayne Features does to me. Like, it's mm. so funny. Uh, yeah. Like, I have nothing more to one. add there. <laughs> yeah, it's not the first one. Yeah, that's for sure. That... <laughs> oh, is this a reference to Weezer? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, fuck's sake. Uh, do you have anything more to add? No, honestly, no. No, overall, I guess just overall, yeah, like I said, I was fairly disappointed with Dawn FM, and I know I'm probably going to get shit for this, but honestly, I think it's his worst album by far. I definitely took less highlights from this album than I did with a lot of his other stuff. And as a whole, for me, it just feels like like, the safest possible way that The weekend could have explored uh, his 80s, like, aesthetic or whatever. And mm. honestly, yeah, that's it. I'm just pretty disappointed. I don't find it all that memorable. There's definitely worthwhile tracks, but, you know, they don't really save the album from being this kind of, like, ov- overly, like, sloggy, kind of overly polished, uh, kind of a, just a slog, really, you know? Mm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I agree a lot with a lot of what you said, but I'm still pretty lukewarm on the project overall. Um, do you want to get to best and worst tracks? Yeah. All right. Some of my favorite tracks from Dawn FM are How Do I Make You Love Me, Take My Breath, and Sacrifice. If I had to pick a least favorite, it would probably be I Heard You're Married, but the the Lil Wayne feature kind of makes that sound funny. So there's that. Um, my favorite tracks are Less Than Zero, uh, Gasoline, and Take My Breath. My least favorite track is Best Friends. All right. So how would you score it then? Mm, light six. I'm feeling kind of a, I think a strong five. Thank you guys so much for watching today's uh, album discussion about Dawn FM. We really hope that you enjoyed. We'd love some feedback for the series because we want to make these episodes the best that we can make them. And your feedback will definitely help us with that. Of course, necessary links will be in the description to our general stuff, our own YouTube channels, our album of the year, rate your music pages, as well as the cassette tapes discord, which which you should definitely get to. And uh, mm-hmm. you have anything to say, Nostalgia? Um, eat your veggies. Yeah, eat your veggies, kids. Don't be like me. Eat your veggies. Anyways, I've been Mickey T. I've been Nostalgia. Peace. Peace and love.